Hey guys! To host the website, run the forums, and travel, we have introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be transparent and unbiased, and this is not an endorsement. It is a privilege to serve you. All right, let's get into it. Hey, what's going on, guys? We're here in Fullerton, California at Fullerton Cycles. I'm here with Mike, who is the owner of Fullerton Cycles. What's you've, up, community? And you've been here quite a while, right? Today or just in general? Well, a little <laughs> bit of both. Huh? Yeah, since we celebrated uh, Sam's big e-bike festival next door, it was his seventh year, so I got here quite early to start off the day, which was great. But yeah, Fullerton Bikes was established in 1967 with a heart opening in 69. I bought the store in 2003, so mm -hmm. that makes me going into my 18th year of ownership. Awesome, awesome. So you're here to help us out with your wealth of knowledge on giant e-bikes. And what the bike we're checking out today, this is the Giant LaFree E Plus 2, sort of a city style cruiser. And one thing that we noticed looking at this um, is it, it looks like really great competition for uh, after Trek acquired Electra and they have a lot of the kind of electric cruiser types. This really looks like it's meant to go head to head with those. Would you say that's true? Yeah. So essentially, I think you know, with with Giant and their capacity and being the you know one of the world's largest bicycle manufacturers and making performance bikes of quality, you know, they have the ability to compete with almost anybody. Um, I think when Giant inspired this bike, it was designed to go after the commuter, comfortable e-bike consumer mm -hmm. whether it be a townie whether it be a specialized or a trek or even you know um i can't av aviation there's a lot Aventon, of different brands yeah. excuse me i apologize mm -hmm. Aventon, or any of those other brands out there high bike you know there's a lot of great bikes out there but this bike delivers a performance package and a great value yeah absolutely and it is at a great price point uh, i think the msrp on this is two thousand dollars is one thing that i noticed when i was going through and measuring this is it is really designed for comfort and adjustability you've got the quill stem that you can raise and lower and uh, this is adjustable angle as well zero to fifty degrees so you can really get a lot of adjustment on that nice 30 degree swept back handlebars and the seat as well this is so this is a giant comfort saddle uh, it's got the rubber bumpers underneath and you could even swap this seat post out uh, for a suspension seat post if you wanted a little bit more comfort on there. I believe that's the standard 30.4 millimeter. Uh, 30 point, yes, 30 point, 30 point 30.9, sorry. 30.9. 30.9, so close. And of so course, close. and of course, we've also got these nice fat tires on here as well. These are the, is it the CVT Zeppelin? Correct, it's a giant, yes, it's a generic tire, but it, it does have more comfort and more uh, rubber. It is a nice tan wall, so it gives it that, uh, Kind of that retro look, and yet keeps performance at a, at a high level. Um, recommended PSI 45 to 65, depending on the rider and the rider weight. But the tire's got some great capabilities, very smooth, very quiet, and, and very good traction. And these are, um, these are also e-bike rated tires. Correct. Um, they're they're you know, e-bike ready, and I believe they've got some basic puncture protection built in as well. Yes, mm -hmm. Kevlar beads. Yep. All right. And so let's. Uh, so that that really helps with the comfort and the ride because this you know does not have any suspension on it. But yes, with those big tires, comfortable seat, and you could even go for a suspension seat post. You're really not going to need any full Correct. suspension. One of the key elements that you mentioned, what I like about this bike, is you mentioned about all the adjustability, Tyson, which is amazing. But what you notice here is Giant's giving us very long cables. We have a lot of people that want maximum comfort and ability on this type of bicycle. They may have elements where their shoulders or neck hurts and they can't be in that hunched over position. Right. With these extra cables, you could change this bar and put a three to four inch rise handlebar and even make it higher if the consumer prefers Oh, wow. That. All right. You would be amazed at how many people want to exchange handlebars. When the manufacturers make these bicycles, they always have the cables are too short. So therefore, if we put a taller bar and the cable's too short, we have to extend the cables and that's an additional cost to the consumer, almost mm -hmm. $100. With this bike, if I put a taller three to four inch handlebar, We've got enough cable to make it work with no additional cost except the handlebar. All right. How awesome is that? Yeah, that's fantastic. And this, uh, the, the one that we're working with here, this is the small frame. And I was even able to adjust it up to where it felt pretty comfortable for me at six foot three. And so Ooh. this is a bike that, you know, if you get medium or large, you can really tweak this to fit anybody. Pretty much so. I'm only five foot six. And uh, this bike's plenty, plenty, plenty comfortable for me. Uh, giant sizing, you know, it varies. Uh, five foot one. Five foot five, five foot six is kind of a small. Five foot five, five foot ten ish is kind of their medium. Five foot ten ish, six foot two ish goes to the large. Mm -hmm. And as you notice, we got the low step through. Yes, very approachable. Yeah. And Giant considers this their unisex bicycle. It's not a male or female, it's unisex because 
A lot of the consumers that are buying e-bikes like this might be a little bit of an elder age, mm -hmm. or they might have a knee problem or a hip problem, and getting their leg over that high top tube to be a comfort rider becomes a challenge. So we're seeing much more male consumers on this bike type of bike for safety only. Nice thing yeah. is, commuters, kids are going to school or something, they have a large backpack on. Fortunately, they don't want to strap it on here. They can, but when they get on the bike with a backpack, they're not mandling this backpack with their laptop and their books and stuff. They hop on easily. They're very well balanced, sitting up upright. So now the backpack isn't a factor if they're leaning over, not falling off their back. It's easy to get on and off the bike with the backpack. Right, and that is a great point, the nice upright, relaxed position. And let's talk about the, the structure a bit here. So we have the double down tube. Uh, this is an aluminum alloy frame. Yes. Most of the components on here are aluminum alloy, except for the uh, steel fenders, yep. um, which is nice with fenders. That's some vibration dampening you get here. But be aware, since those are steel, those can scratch and then rest. So if you well, do, they can ding. They ding. Yeah. And so but, if you get them, if you get them scratched up, you can put clear nail polish or even just paint on it. Uh, you know touch up paint to the same color or even tape was what some people will do various things yes uh-huh and then yeah aluminum alloy on everything else other than the steel chain ring which keeps the weight light i weighed this bike at uh, 51.9 pounds for the small light. frame which is pretty light yeah and they've done a great job to keep light components on here for example the battery back here um, this is a proprietary giant battery their energy pack uh, 409 watt hour it's a 36 volt, I'll let you, if you want to take that out of there. A 36 volt, uh, what was it, like 11.36 amp hour, I believe. So this is what it looks like. And uh, very easy to carry. It's kind of got this like uh, handle grip on the back here, which helps when you're pulling it out of the bike. And of course you can press the button on here to check the charge. Uh, the one downside of this battery is there's no way to plug it in off the bike. Here, I'll let you put that back in there. Yeah, unfortunately they haven't solution that unless we use the dongle right yeah above and beyond item to purchase if needed yep so you can get that dongle so you can charge it off the bike and that'll work you know just be careful not to lose it and the charging port is right here on the front of the battery it is attached with a leash which is great to see that way you don't have to worry about it getting lost and it does fit very snugly you don't have to worry about any water or dirt getting in there and so this is the giant sync drive life motor which is based on the i want to say it's the yamaha pw motor correct uh, this is a 250 watt uh motor 250 watt nominal 500 peak correct and this is kind of like a middle of the line ish one for giant that's designed more for you know city use commuting urban riding that kind of stuff um and i'm gonna let mike tell us a little bit more about the motor because we've got some cool stuff coming up in 2020 for giant correct we do yeah we can talk about uh -huh. that so essentially this motor is in development and was created by yamaha for giant so it's a proprietary motor Another bike company cannot go to Yamaha and purchase this motor because Giant has worked hand in hand for a lot of years with Yamaha to build this motor specifically for them. Mm -hmm. That's what the engineers have developed. The nice thing about this motor and what it offers the consumers besides all the numbers and the power is it does have the auto mode. If I hold this button right down here for three or four seconds, ready? The center light goes on. Okay. When the center light goes on, this bike now is in the function of being completely auto. So based upon the cadence, based upon the torque, the gear and everything combined that the motor reads while pedaling, this bike knows, it's a smart motor, how to operate in the most economical, most efficient way to use the least amount of power, but yet keep the bike running efficiently. So that makes it nice for the lady consumer that doesn't want to worry about the power. They get conf people get confused. What gear do I put it in? How do I ride it? Blah, blah, blah. They're all freaking out. I'd say, look, this bike's a no-brainer. Put it in auto, let the motor do the work, and you ride like a regular bicycle and just shift the gears. The bike knows how much power it needs to provide you to have the most efficient and effective ride. End of story. Yeah, and that is a really cool feature to see in auto mode. We've seen some similar stuff, um, like the you know the EMTB on some of the mountain bikes. Um, but having an auto mode where you can just kind of set it and forget it and you don't have to worry about it is really great. And this bike is measuring all kinds of stuff in addition to you know the like cadence and torque and your rear wheel speed. I was reading it also measures uh, like slope and they've got an accelerometer in there. I can't even keep up. All kinds Sorry. of stuff. I'm not the big um, I can't keep up. And so, and this, this reminds me of something that I noticed um, while I was looking at the brakes. We'll talk about those real quick. Um, so we've got Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, uh, 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. Those are dual piston calipers. So nice solid brakes, really good stopping power. Uh, one thing I noticed when I was testing it, now this could have just been the walk mode, but no, no motor inhibitors on this model. Correct. 
Uh, and normally that's something that I see as kind of a downside because you know no motor inhibitors uh, to shut off the motor when you hit those brakes but on a bike like this there's no throttle so you don't have to worry about that and there's so many different sensors connected to the motor that it's way less of a risk and it's really more of just kind of a maybe a minor inconvenience at that so I think that having it without the motor inhibiting is just fine uh, let's see, what else do we have going on here? So we have 170 millimeter crank arms here, and these are the FP pedals. They're plastic with uh, rubber grips on them for better traction, and then reflectors on the front and rear. Really love to see that. And we've got a giant kickstand here. This proprietary is- Proprietary kickstand? Yep, yeah, proprietary kickstand, rear mounted, which we love to see, because you don't have any risk of getting pedal lock there if you're maneuvering the bike with the kickstand down. It is adjustable height which is another really nice feature. So moving over to this side here, uh, we've got a 38 tooth steel chain ring in the front and that's connected to a 11 to 32 tooth cassette in the back. Uh, this is a Shimano, Shimano Altus derailleur here. Eight speed? Uh, eight speed, yep, it's a one by eight, thank you. And it's, um, we've got the Shimano uh, shifters up here on the front as well. And I think it's, uh, a two down, one up. Does that sound right? Correct. And then it's a proprietary shifter, so we don't. You can't drop a bunch of gears at once to protect the integrity of the chain and cassette, or strength wise. Yep. Which that's a really great thing to see on an electric bike, because dropping a lot at once is even more risky when you've got a motor connected to that chain. And moving down here, uh, so we do have a chain guard right here, plastic yes. chain guard. That's really great for keeping your pant legs out of the chain. And um, one thing I didn't see on here that I was a little bit bummed about is it doesn't have a chain guide. So this doesn't do, I guess it, maybe it does actually help a little bit to keep it from jumping off on yeah, the backside. If, if you notice where the chain guide is, it, it is very low up here. And look, it's, I can't get the chain off. So okay, if, all if right. I'm pushing it up, if the chain guard was higher, then I could push the chain off. Good news, the chain shouldn't come off. Bad news, if it ever does come off, it's kind of hard to get it back on with the chain guard. But I don't think for this type of riding, it will ever come off. Right, and so I guess then if you were um, doing some maintenance and needed to take the chain off, you have to loosen up that chain guard to be able to get it out of Correct. there easily. Yep. Yep. Or a good mechanic that knows how to work with this bike could ride it through without having any problems. All right, yep, and, um, and like we said, uh, one by eight, so eight speeds there. And it is a kind of a small range with eight to 32 tooth in the back, but for the kind of city riding that you'll be doing, that should be sufficient. It's got the rack built in where the battery's hidden. Then it's got the bungee cord strap here, so we can strap on panniers, you can strap on racks. If we put a basket on the front, we can do that. It's got capabilities to do that, but then you muddy up the front of the bicycle. So in my personal opinion, selling this bike and most of our consumers are really excited about everything on the back, it is cleaner. And if you need to go to pannier bags, we can do that, laptop, groceries for a Portland type commuter up there. There's a lot of stuff that can be mounted on the back of the bike and just make it super efficient, super clean, and super functional. I like that, and I like this too. We were talking about this, how we have this ring back here, which doubles as some protection for the fender, especially if the bike is tipped back all the way. But then also you can actually, you know, hook onto this if you're uh, maybe mounting, or, you know, putting something a little bit funky sized on your rear rack there. Uh, a couple more things that I noticed that are just things to be aware of that I want to talk about before we get into it. Uh, one of them is that if you are turning here, the uh, the fender on the front wheel is like really close to pedal st or to toe striking range, and there's this uh, one of the mounting nuts on right there. That if you have bigger feet like mine, just be careful of that, so that if you're turning, that you're not hitting that with your toe. And one other thing that I noticed on this bike that uh, does not come with is integrated lights. So we do have really nice integrated reflectors uh, front and rear but we don't have any integrated lights, which is pretty common when you look at bikes in this price point. And so just be aware you're gonna to need to have your own lights if you are riding this at night. Now, for me, that's, that can kind of be a plus. So for example, on my electric bike, I have integrated lights, but I found when I ride at night, the headlight is actually bright enough that it'll actually it'll put a dent in how far I can drive. So that's, you know, it's a trade off there, whether you want to have those on there or not. I think that's a valid point. You know, I like to sell the bikes. I want all the power to be in the motor. I like all the power to go right here. We could add tons of different stuff and accessories that could be incorporated, but that all it does is drain from your battery. So let's just say the what if. What if you go to work and you forget to charge your bike and you got to ride home at night and you might need a full charge in your battery? That lights aren't going to draw, char, are going to draw, excuse me, draw from this battery. But these lights here operate on their own and they're going to give you different levels of power based upon what you invest in. Yeah, absolutely. And it's clean. 
And we, we did talk about the, the controls here. You have you know, your buttons to control your levels of assist. And that was holding down down is what you get you in and out yes, of auto, you hold is that the, right? Uh, once you turn the bike on, then we do a five second hold on the lower on off switch there on the lower side. All right, so I'll turn it off here turn first off. so we can go from the start. There you go, so turn it back on. So now again, you have full control of your power. So different levels. And then when you hold this down here for five seconds or three seconds, whatever it takes, and the center light goes on, now it's in auto. And it does not matter where this is to be in auto. Okay, perfect. That's that what awesome? I was gonna ask. And another great feature down here, this is a walk mode. So if you're, you know, let's say you happen to have stopped on a hill and you just have, a, you need to walk up to the bus stop or something like that, you can hold down walk mode and that will propel the bike forward so you don't have to push it. Correct. And something that we've been talking about too a little bit is what Giant is going to be doing uh, next year with these bikes. Because I understand they've got another version of this bike that is going to have a carbon belt yeah. drive. Is that right? Yeah, so that bike is actually already out. So Giant, oh, it is already it out. out. Wonderful. It's a 2019. And the difference between the bike is it runs an internal Shimano Nexus hub with a belt drive and hydraulic disc brakes for $2,500. Wow, and that is amazing. The nice thing is, point. me personally, until I... I saw it when Giant brought it out, and I was like, I don't think that's going to work. When we had a customer special order one and buy it, I rode it. It was definitely a game changer. The smoothness and of the bike, number one, and the quietness of the, of the belt drive and the way it performed is actually a game changer. Unfortunately, at this time, Giant sold out of that bike, so I don't have anything here to show you guys, but we do have some on order. Moving forward, this bike will still be in Giant's lineup for next year, 2020. There won't be much changes. The only change that I've heard through the rumbling is the motor will continue to get quieter. I know on the mountain bikes we discussed, it's about 18 to 20%. This motor is a little bit different. It will be quieter. I'm not sure the percentages, so don't quote me on that. Uh, a couple other nice things on here. Um, I really like the, the colors on these tires. So this bike comes in two colors. This is the seafoam green, and then there's also a royal blue, and that one actually has all black tires. So these with the kind of tan or cream uh, sidewalls on here, color matches really well with the seafoam green. All right, guys, I wanted to show you the charger here. So this is a really lightweight chargers. I think it was only 1.6 pounds. And this is a three amp charger. So that is a little bit better than kind of the standard or the average that we see as a two amp charger. So a little bit faster here. I, you'll probably be looking at around a four hour charge time if you had run the battery all the way out, which of course is, you know, not a good idea to do. You want to kind of keep it above 20% when you can. And when you're not using the bike for a long time, it's a good idea to take the battery off, store it in kind of a cool, dry place, keep it you know, between 20 and 80% when you're doing that. That way, that'll give you the best life on those cells. Yeah, great. And remember, the battery also, too, is a single cell supported battery. So essentially, the way the battery is designed, if one cell should go out, the battery will still function. It's not like the Christmas tree light. When one light goes out, the whole thing shuts down. On top of that, Giant does give you a nice warranty on, their, on any of their electrical parts. This is a two year or 600 cycle warranty. The nice thing is this can has diagnostics so we can plug it into our computer. We log into the giant website and it'll do a diagnosis of everything on the bicycle and the powertrain. It lets us know the cycles and if there is anything going wrong. And also as far as software updates, the nice thing is when we do that, now we have the capability to make sure the firmware and software is updated to the current that Giant's managing at their, out their facility. Similar to an iPhone or a smartphone where you do your software updates, the bike works the exact same way. Pretty trick. Which is awesome, yeah. And speaking of warranty, this bike has got excellent warranty on it from Giant. It's two-year comprehensive and then lifetime on the frame. Correct. And with Giant, you get amazing support, not only from you know dealers wherever you bought it, but from Giant directly, you get fantastic support. And they've also got an app, which we didn't talk about, um, but it's worth mentioning because when you look up here for the control pad, it's just, you know, buttons and LED lights. So if you're used to having a screen here to look at, they have got an app here called Ride Control. We'll open that up here so you can see, you know, your battery level, you can do uh, motor tuning, you can do trip planning and all that kinds of stuff. But we can only show you kind of some screenshots here because we can't link this app with, directly with this bike because you have to register it to do that. But if you are you know, used to having a screen and you really like that, you can download the app, you can just get a phone mount for your handlebars and then you'll be all set. All right guys, so we're gonna give this a test ride here and check it out. So I'm gonna fire up the control pad here and you'll notice, I mean, we are in very bright daylight and like you can still see those LEDs very easily, even on camera here. 
And so I'm going to, I'm gonna first just try this out in the highest level of assist. So we're gonna crank that up all the way. And I just wanna kinda see how loud, how loud is this motor and how much performance can I get out of it? So we'll get started here. Remember this is pedal assist only, no throttle here. Very smooth and very quiet. I can barely even hear the motor. Move the camera down so you can hear what it sounds like. Extremely quiet, and that's really kind of the defining characteristic of these sync drive life motors is that they're very quiet they're built for using in this you know in city urban environments and they're not big time performance motors but i'm still feeling quite a bit of a kick from this in the highest level of assist i'm going to try switching over to that automatic mode that mike was talking about where it just automatically determines how much assist to give you based on the what it's reading from all of its various sensors so to do that we hold down until that center light comes on right there. I'll give you another listen down from the motor as we get started. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear it very well. It is so quiet, but the responsiveness of this drivetrain is just phenomenal. I feel like I'm getting instant power as soon as I start pedaling, and the auto mode's really cool, because if I pedal a little bit, I get a little bit. It feels like maybe I'm in level one of assist. And then if I really start pushing down on the pedals, I get a whole bunch of speed. And so being able to just ride without having to worry about like, oh, should I switch up to another level of assist for this or not? That is really cool. And especially to see it done where it works that well is really awesome. Now, one other thing I wanna add on to this is just to talk about the comfort of the ride. Because it's one thing to, you know, look at it when we're in the shop and we can check out the, uh, we can say, oh, you know, it's got the big fat tires and the comfy seat, but to actually get out and ride it is really, you know, where the rubber hits the road, so to speak. And I'm impressed by the comfort of this ride, even without any kind of suspension to speak of, it is very comfy and, and it, with a suspension seat post, I mean, that would be just phenomenal. All right, guys, I wanna show you the shifter in action as well. I like the shifter because on the, right here they've got a little readout so you can just look down and see what gear you're in. It keeps you from having to kind of look to the back if you don't remember. And then yeah, I'm gonna shift through these so you can see it in action. So I'm in the easiest gear right now in first. And while I'm here, I do wanna point out that the automatic mode for pedal assist is doing a great job of fitting with this easy gear. All right, so I'll give you a view down there. So overall, really smooth shifting from the Shimano system. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this bike with me. This was the Giant LaFree E Plus 2, the 2019 model. Really solid bike, great for a city, urban commuting. And I was impressed by the bike. The, the ride quality is great. It's really smooth. I love the components that they're using and the warranty and dealership uh, support that you get from buying a giant bike is just phenomenal. And if you own one of these bikes, then hey, chime in and let us know in the comments section. If you've got questions about it, feel free to ask us there. If you, you think we missed something and you got a question, then just holler and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. All right, guys, we'll see you next time and ride safe.